Hey everybody. <clears throat> I just wanted to share this moment with you guys. I I um, was looking at this piston and uh, this piston is not very new. Um, we, we went really fast with this and set some records and there's some pretty fast times that we had before Gage Herrera got into pro stock, but um, we went 673, 675, 674 with this in our V-twin um, back in 2015 and 2016. And I wanted to tell you that, you know, I was, I was coming up on some great ideas at the time and I, I got shallow pockets here. And these shallow pockets have allowed me to move this ringland up, and I've got a, I've got too much B dimension, and the B dimension is the clearance from the back of the ringland to the closest area of the valve pocket, and that's called the B dimension. Also, I've got some really thin rings, and they're thinner now, and I've got the accumulator groove that absorbs the pressure and build up on top of the second ring and it stops it from blowing the top ring off for a little bit longer. And trust, uh, you know, these things go up and down 100 times a second. So also I wanted to tell you that this piston does not have the wrist pin very high. Um, I believe that as we were going, we were moving the pin higher and higher and higher and we were shortening the deck of the motor, making the deck shorter and shorter and shorter. And uh, at the same time, we were getting shorter push rods with that. So moving the head down, down, down. And uh, that, was, that was good to, to shorten the push rods. And we, we were stuck with whatever rod we had. We could run a little bit shorter rod, but the rod uh, dictated where the wrist pin was when I moved all these rings together and got a good, good real estate. But I wanted to tell you that the cam timing, I found, I discovered that it's my opinion that the intake opening is not very important and the exhaust closing is not very important and you can run really shallow pockets. If you're gonna run an early intake opening, no, yeah, early intake opening, you have to run a really deep pocket, real deep, and that messes up your ring placement so that you have to increase this ring uh, B dimension. You have to move it way down the piston and move the ring land way down the piston and move the oil ring way down the piston and then it gets into your uh, wrist pin and that uh, makes you have to put a, a wrist pin in that has um, that takes up the same space as the oil ring. I showed you a, uh, one of those that I don't really agree with but I wanted to take just a minute and tell you that it starts with cam timing. Um, a friend of mine that was really, really smart, and I looked up to him a bunch, that was told me in 1988 that the piston design would be made to dictate the cam timing. And at the, at the time, the cam timing was, piston design was built around the cam timing, and now we have a little bit to do with, we're, we have very minimal pockets, and you know, we got to get the intake closing at the right place to get the, the charge timing right, the exhaust valve open at the right place to get the charge timing right, but this this is the result of overlap, and I have very, very little overlap, and we didn't run much overlap even back in 2015 and 2020, and if I was running today, I would be running less overlap. and. I wanted to tell you too that the wrist pins that I was running, I wanted, I run a 220 wall and I was trying to shorten it up to make it a really stiff wrist pin. And I was able to get substantial ring seal by not trading off for a lightweight wrist pin and not trading off for a super lightweight piston. I know that all of our life and all of our career we've been we wanted the, the lightest piston and the lightest wrist pin, but that's not really what you want. You want good ring seal, and you have to add a little weight back to the piston. You have to add a little bit of weight to the wrist pin in order to get good ring seal. And I also believe that the people that are running these now, uh, even not, not the V-twin and stuff, but V-8s, they're trying to put too long of a connecting rod in 
which means they don't leave real estate for the ring package. And I believe that that's a handicap that you build it with a, a long rod. I think the first thing you should do is get your cam timing the minimum overlap that you can get it op opening and closing, intake and exhaust. Get those to those very small numbers where you have really small TDC lift, and then you can build the rings to the ring di ring dimension that you need to have good ring seal, paramount ring seals paramount. Then locate your wrist pin, and then the rod length is whatever's left. You got to have the stroke, you know, but you want the biggest bore you can get, and whatever stroke it takes to run the maximum cubic inches, and let the rod length be the last idea. It's the last th decision to make. And I uh, just wanted to share. Oh, this ring, this piston is uh, 5.140, 5 inches, 140 thousandths. It's got some really substantial gas ports. I like the ones on top for all engines because they work better than the ones on the sides. Um, because when, the, when, you ring, uh, when your gas ports or rings on, are on the side, you get a bunch of that cut off when when you kick the piston over and it does several times um, at rpm about a hundred times a second so anyway that was just real quick download of um, what i was thinking about today and i just wanted to share it with you